What's cracking like everyone, MG here, and I'm back with more Dead Rising 2. Let's get it. I've been told that we have received a broadcast from our field reporter, Rebecca Chang, who is inside Fortune City. It is clear that the outbreak started in the Fortune City arena during last night's Terror is Reality show. Information received from a behind-the-scenes source reveals that this outbreak was not an accident, but rather an act of terrorism. This shocking footage was obtained from a source inside the Fortune City Arena, the site of the Terror's Reality Game Show. It may be upsetting to some viewers. Initial reports suggest that the man in the video is former motocross champion Chuck Green. What? Green, a member of the zombie rights protest group Cure, was a contestant in tonight's pay-per-view game show. Acquaintances describe Green as a known drifter who is still angry over his wife's death in the Vegas outbreak. This horrible act of terror appears to be an escalation of violence for the protest group. This is Rebecca Chang reporting live from the Fortune City Hotel in the heart of Fortune City. What? That's complete bullshit. That was not me. Did you have something to do with this? No way, not in your life. My daughter and I barely get out of that arena alive. What possible reason would I have to do something like that? Why are they saying you're part of Cure? I went to one meeting, once. After I lost my wife, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I'm being set up. I think I know why. It's not the first time members of Cure have been falsely accused of being involved with an outbreak. We were in town protesting that awful show you were on. Do you believe me? I don't know what to believe. But you sure don't seem like a terrorist. And I know we weren't involved. Look, we have three days before the military rolls in. That's how much time I have to prove I'm innocent. The reporter, the one at the hotel. The tape she had, it's a complete fake. She said she had a source. Whoever that is must know more. I need to find out where she got it. She said she was in the hotel. I'll keep an eye on your daughter. I won't say anything to her. I don't want her to worry. Damn, can you imagine that? Can you imagine being framed for terrorism? Wow, that's crazy. All right, so we so we're out here. We're back in the trap now. Let's 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 go get that OJ. You know what I'm saying? Say hi to Lulu, okay? AKA, you know, Cindy Lennox. Okay, so we got Sullivan here. Um, I think what's gonna happen is, yep, we're actually gonna gain access to the maintenance room. And I think I mentioned it in the previous episode. Uh, what's really cool about uh, DR2 is the implementation of uh, what's called combo weapons, where you essentially put two items together that are scattered throughout the game. Uh, for example, the bat up there in our menu, you see the little wrench with the icon. That means that it can be combined with a with another item to create a uh, combo weapon. So and it's looking like we're we're introduced to the messaging system where we get our scoops much more. Uh, enjoyable than part one with fucking Otis. I'll take Stacy over Otis any day, so yeah. Oh, okay, so we're about to see the cutscene here. Let's go. So, um, in the beginning of DR2's promotional period, and here's our uh, combo card right here, the spiked bat. You basically combine a box of nails with the uh, bat. So, in the beginning, when they were marketing this game, uh, when I learned about the combo weapons, I was so fucking stoked. So, this little mini cutscene right here plays every time you make shit. Um, I'm just going through with it for the first time. With you guys, uh, I'm gonna skip it from now on. 
Okay, so uh, here we go. We have the uh, spiked bat, and what's cool about uh, these combo weapons is general attacks do give an extra amount of PP. As you can see, see there, uh, you know, 50 PP was flying in the air. And in addition to that, weapons also have what's called a secondary special attack. And you saw me just lay out that fucking zombo right there, just slam the bat in his skull and just ripped it out. Like the the attack animations, the secondary attack animations in DR2 is so fucking raw, visceral. You can like feel that shit, especially you know when you do the secondary attack with the uh, baseball bat and the nails. You can feel it just right in the zombo's head, and then. As he's pulling it out, it's nuts. And I just remember the first time um, playing the demo. Uh, so take uh, take one step back even further. There was actually a prequel demo for the 360 that cost like five bucks back when demos were actually good, right? So um, I got the demo, and you basically start off in this town outside of uh, Fortune City, and you're with Katie. And uh, you just go through um, little mini missions, and you can actually level up in the demo and move that data into the main game, which I thought was so cool. You could only level up to five, but it still gave you a general idea of how the game was. And I remember using the spiked bat and the secondary attack when Chuck fucking slammed the, the bat into the zombo skull and ripped it out. I was like, holy fuck, this game is violent as fuck. I mean, okay, Dead Rising, the first one, Dead Rising, was pretty violent, but, like, it was, it's, it's way more detailed and more gruesome in part two, like, uh, and throughout this playthrough, I will try and make as many combo cards as possible just to show you guys how insane the, um, the, the gore is. Okay, so, anyway, now that, uh, we're done with that rant there. We just rescued uh, Lashandra and her man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, quick and easy uh, PP right there, you know? Um, doing a perfect run is very, very challenging and very, very stressful. Um, and it is still possible to do, you know? If, if it turns out, like, let's just say that you are just enjoying this game with me, you've never played it, and you decide to pick it up, okay? Just... You know, just just be aware that, you know, it's okay that you'll be overwhelmed by scoops. And sometimes you can't rescue everyone because it's the the the, the game is running on a clock, okay? So, um, you know, don't, don't worry too much about rescuing everyone and doing a perfect run is possible. And if you decide to do it, um, I recommend it. Assuming that you love this game that much that you're going to do it. Uh, it's it's very rewarding, that's for sure. Okay, so now that we have the access to the maintenance room, you can see all of these items here. They have um, the wrench and the uh, hexagon icon. That means that they can be combined with another item, yada yada yada, you know this. Now, they have to be combined with specific items. You can't just mix, it, mix, mix and match everything together, you know, um, willy-nilly. Like, it, it, there has to be a pairing you know, there, there, there is a web, um, a, um, a special weapon database, and you gotta follow the rules here. I think in part three, it's a little bit more freeform. Um, it's been a while since I played part three. I might have to replay it again with you guys, but um, yeah. So DR two started the uh, combo weapons. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm trying to think what past me is doing here. I think what I'm trying to do is okay i know what's going on here so it's very clear just looking at this uh at the video here of my gameplay video is that um i have my dead risings confused and uh, basically what i mean by that is um right now i'm headed to a secret area where you can obtain the ninja costume um specifically i think it's the helmet that's here and what's cool about the ninja costume is all you have to do is just wear one piece of the ninja costume and it will virtually make you invisible to the zombos. Like, they will not notice you. You know, like a ninja, basically, right? And the only way that they would actually notice you is if you're right up their ass. Like, you're standing in front of them. They will, they will finally notice you and start attacking you. But if you have one piece of the ninja outfit on, 
uh, zombos that are about 5, 10 feet away from you, fif even 15 feet away, they won't notice you and they'll just keep doing their zombo business. And that makes the game so much more enjoyable. You know, you won't have to deal with zombos while you're trying to corral survivors and all kinds of other stuff. And yes, it is part of the challenge. But you know, honestly, it the 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 zombie AI just gets really annoying after a while. So, um, long story short, the the ninja costume is not here. It's actually in uh, off the record. So. I have my shit com confused in it, and I think past me here is just gonna do a double take and being like, okay, uh, where is the ninja costume? And um, I probably should have t should have uh, snagged the sniper rifle, but um, you know, I decided to grab the stake instead. Um, yeah, I should have probably grabbed the uh, sniper rifle instead because if you hold on to uh, fresh food like steak and pizza, they'll eventually rot. So, yeah. And then there's another um, uh, stuffed animal that we can bring to Katie, and it's looking like past me is deciding if I should just make the time for that. I'm probably pissed off that I was unable to secure the uh, ninja outfit piece. I'm probably confused, and um, at the same time, I, I, did, I did not want to waste time. So, yeah, so it looks like we're just going to head on out of here and um, go meet up with Rebecca Chang. And if you want, you can destroy those um, slot machines for money. Money does uh, fly out of those things if you destroy them. Uh, it's it, If you want to farm money that way, uh, I would recommend uh, destroying ATMs because you're guaranteed 10 grand per ATM. Um, I, it, l later on in the playthrough, I will go over how to make um, millions of dollars in this game easily. Um but yeah, we'll uh, we'll eventually get to that. So right now we are outside of the Disneyland esque area of uh, you know Fortune City here, just like in, just like in Vegas. Okay. So one of the things that you can see here is the amazingly large Zombo count on screen. Still amazing right now. And one of the first things you want to do is go over to this side right here where the uh, Atlantic opening is and you will find a little forklift uh, car um, It spawns there every time. Okay, so whenever you're coming out from the Royal plush uh, F Royal flush plaza um, hit up that area and grab uh, grab the fucking motor because you'll need it and um, vehicles in Dead Rising 2 uh, the the durability isn't that great so don't run or run over every zombie that you see like I'm doing here. Um, so you you you, you want to preserve the uh, integrity of the uh, of the motor here. So we got so we got our uh, survivor here, Chad. Okay. Uh, right now he's in distress because he doesn't know where his um, wife is, and we're just gonna do this scoop real quick. You know, um, per if I'm playing casually, what I like to do is. Um, I like to do uh, save all female runs, you know, for fun. Uh, I especially uh, enjoyed doing that in Dead Rising for the 360. Um, and part of the reason why I do things like that is because, you know, it's fun to do make up these little challenges. But also, you know, um, you it, it takes a huge load off your shoulder that you don't have to rescue everyone, you know, especially if you're not doing a perfect run. So we're actually going to make our way over here, you know, to uh, Chad's wife here, Doris. Okay, she's 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 holding it down right here. She's fucking standing her ground with her firearm. And we just have to talk to her um, and let her and Chad speak. I mean, you guys know the normal routine here in Dead Rising. When they were hugging, I almost wanted to pull out a camera and take a picture, but uh, yeah, we're uh, we're Chuck. We're not um, we're not Frank. So just go through this. Just go through this um, cutscene here, and what you want to do is just proceed back to the um, safe house on foot. Uh, I ch I opted not to grab the forklift 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not quite sure why I didn't get the um, golf. Uh, the golf car, because uh, the golf car it will actually work as a good shield until it blows up because you can just plow through the zombos instead of running like this. Um, I think the reason why I did not want to get the golf cart is because it could only hold two people and I did not want to risk leaving Doris behind because she's not as, you know, uh, exuberant as Chad is. So I just decided to do it on, for, on foot. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced because I have so much experience in this fucking engine here and as, as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm trying to run sh uh, straight lines as possible I don't veer too much uh, and the reason why you don't want to veer in um, in Dead Rising games when you're escorting uh, survivors is the AI pathing can you know unlink itself from you it'll it, it will get confused and it will start walking in a strange direction it'll it'll take a different path so to to uh help escorting uh survivors easier it's best to just run in, in a straight line as possible so uh, i think i mentioned in the previous episode that you can purchase that car that's on display for a um, quarter of a million dollars once you get that once you can afford that it will make going to and fro from this place so much better okay so what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing a gem okay because uh, the gem mixed with the flashlight will create a laser sword uh, a lightsaber and uh, you know what, thinking about it now in retrospect, since I was outside of the, uh, s since I was at the strip, I should have stopped by the movie theater to learn the laser sword combo. So let me take a step back here and uh, sort of explain how the uh, combo card system works. So. Throughout the game, as you level up or you 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 discover these combo cards, is um, you will be awarded with the card with the full with with full capabilities. And what I mean by that is when you okay, hold on, let me fucking let me let me see how can I explain this. So, as you level up and as you discover. Um, certain areas of the game you will be awarded um combo cards okay and it will sh it will give you directions how to create the combo weapon and in addition to that you will have um two abilities you'll have the standard ability and the secondary ability now throughout throughout the game you can you can still discover cards without technically earning them through leveling up and the way that the game identifies these cards is they the game will call it a scratch card basically what that means is by having a scratch card of a particular web of a particular um, combo weapon the game will say okay cool you know how to make this specific weapon but because you haven't earned it properly you know through leveling up you will not have the secondary attack until you hit, you know, until you've actually reached a certain level. So, and, and, you know, the thing that was really interesting about scratch cards is it's, it's really cool because it gives you sort of a, it gives you like a preview of what the weapon could be without, you know, fully enjoying it and getting bored of it. And, so you must be thinking to yourself, okay, how the fuck do you get a scratch card? Well, um, there are many ways that you can get scratch cards is by, actually, I'll just skip the other reasons. I'll, I'll stick to the most obvious one is just making them out of thin air. Um, you can just combine items at random and the game will accept, uh, c combinations. 
and then that's basically the game's way of saying like okay you've discovered it cool here's a scratch card you know go fuck off uh until you earned it properly you know congratulations you 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 were smart enough to actually experiment with the combo system that's that's my view on it it's like the game is rewarding you for your curiosity you know what i'm saying so so yeah that's combo weapons uh, combo cards and scratch cards and i think the reason why i went off in that tangent is because i i forgot to learn the um laser sword in the theater so on the strip if you go inside the uh movie theater you uh, you examine a movie poster it looks like a generic um uh star wars obviously and um you will learn the laser sword so it will i think i think it will give us the full the the full card because uh I, I learned the scratch card because I, I, I knew the combination already the the jewel and the and the uh, flashlight so I think I might do that I think I might do that in the next uh, playthrough I do here Oh, and it's and it's looking like I just earned the skill, the um, the uh, jump kick. The jump kick is definitely one of the more useful um, practical attacks in Dead Rising. You just jump and you kick. Um, one thing that Chuck will earn. Am I actually gonna try to go back and see if I missed the uh, ninja hat? What the fuck am I doing up here? Oh, I thought... Okay. Okay, so I think what happened here is I thought I did the uh, pawn shop quest yet. So I went up here to look at the pawn shop to see if... Um, if uh, the, uh, the pawn shop was available. Oh, oh, also, yeah, I f also forgot another survivor here. Gotcha. Okay, Esther. Okay, cool. So this this sweet old lady, you know, she's over here. I think she, she I think she gets confused, like she thinks. I I think she she thinks that uh, I'm a um, an employee, and she's asking for help. So, and she's super old too. I think she's like ninety five years old, something like that. I mean, she looks great for ninety five. So, um, yeah, okay. This is the reason why I went up here. I'm tripping. Stop it, stop it. So, what's really cool about escorting survivors um, by carrying them or using your shoulder, uh, just like in Dead Rising, is you you actually gain some poise. You you get push priority here. So let's say for example, there is a group of zombos just hanging out. And you are carrying a survivor like this, uh, you will actually push them aside, which is really good. I used to, I used to love uh, escorting um, survivors that allowed me to pick them up like this, uh, either over the shoulder, um, on the back, or straight up carry like this. Um, in in Dead Rising, one of the options was you can hold the uh, survivor's hand oh my god that's that's like some of the most frustratingly bad mechanics ever because i remember being I, I remember holding a survivor's hand and just walking right and then the all the survivor has to do is just bump into a trash can and, and you can see that um the one zombie got pushed aside as we ran past him so I remember in Dead Rising, you would literally just bump into a fucking trash can and it would break um, the hand holding, which was so fucking frustrating. Or if uh, as you were running and a zombo goes in between your hands, which of course it will break in real life, but I mean, 
it could be anything in the middle. It could be um, it could be a trash can or a um, a, a a bench, and it would break. It would break. Oh wow! Look at her. She's ninety eight. Wow, that's ridiculous. So yeah, it it's uh, holding hands is. Mm, it's not a really good mechanic in Dead Rising, and so we actually found the bag of marbles, and we are gonna bring that over to Katie. You know, what I'm saying she's super stoked. Um, I mean, how much? I mean, how many hours can you spend? You know, on your uh, on your PSP, right? So, you know, uh, Chuck out here being a good dad, trying to what you call it, trying to. Um, keep his daughter entertained so what I did there was I just did a quick save and I just uh, cut the video here straight to the loading piece I think it's much better okay so we got some interesting scoops here so one man's trash that is the scoop where we have to talk with the hooded guys the the three stooges who tried to mug us they also run a business a um, a pawn shop so what we have to do is talk to the main honcho bro over on the strip. You know, it kind of sucks uh, not being able to use a skateboard. Um, you know, one of the cool things, uh, about Dead Rising 2 is the, um, is the additional costumes, okay? Uh, one of the DLC costumes, okay, it, um, I, if I remember correctly, it should be a tailgating, uh, costume, where you're, you're just basically a super hyped up, um, football fan. And what's really cool, oh, and this is actually a really great way to get around to, um, the, it's like the same trick in Dead Rising, you just grab a push wheel like this, gar a garbage bin, uh, or a wheelchair, and, um, Chuck or Frank will just push the thing, so it's a, it's a fast way to get around, and speaking of that, the, um, back to the whole DLC piece, uh, there is a DLC costume, okay, that if you wear one piece, just like the ninja costume, if you pick up a football, um, Chuck will rush as if he's like some type of linebacker or something like that. He will hold the football in his hand, okay, like he's playing with his right, uh, with his right arm, and with his left hand, he's going to face it forward and he's just gonna run as if he's he's a professional football player and that is super underrated it's it's on what PC PC version for you guys so um what's it's it's on the same level as the skateboard in terms of usefulness like it's uh it's actually a really good tactic to uh, to get around faster in Dead Rising 2 so I, I definitely recommend you guys check it out uh, assuming, you know, you want to spend some extra money on, uh, on a DLC, so. And so here we are in uh, Moe's uh, pawn shop here. Um, you know, again, this place, you can buy combo weapons as well as Zombrex. And the price of that Zombrex goes up 25 grand every time you uh, buy one. And I think it tops off at about 100 grand uh, for a bottle. And it's like, god damn, that's insane. So now that we've essentially activated all um, pawn shops, if you do that quest, all pawn shops and everywhere will activate, and you can use them to shop. Um, we're going to head over here and uh, talk to our girl Rebecca, you know what I'm saying? Because she's got the scoop, baby. Maybe grab this plant too while I'm at it. <laughs>
to pay attention out here, buddy. Thanks. Rebecca Chang, Channel 6 Action News. Chuck Green. Are you serious? From the security video. I thought you'd be long gone by now. Since you're sticking around, care to answer a few questions? I'm not your story, lady. I didn't have anything to do with the outbreak. Right, sure you didn't. And that tape showing you tampering with the cages was... A fake. I had nothing to do with this. My daughter and I barely got out of there alive. I need to know where you got that tape from, and who your source is. Reporters don't reveal their sources, Chuck. That's privileged information. Privileged my ass. That wasn't me on the tape. I'm being set up. Hmm. Why should I believe you? You don't have to. But you want the big story, right? Help me out, and I'll give you an interview. With the prime suspect? It has to be an exclusive. Sure. Doesn't matter to me. I can't tell you my source. But... There is a central security room. There'll be footage of everything that happened there. I can show you where it is. Well, that's a start at least. Aren't we gonna need your crew? Hmm. They ran off with all the equipment. I guess they just didn't want it bad enough. Rebecca, ladies and gentlemen, uh, another Capcom baddie, uh, definitely not, <coughs> okay, okay, uh, alright Chuck, input lag for you guys, um, yeah, Rebecca really isn't my, one of, isn't my favorite Capcom baddie, but she, she's got some, she's got some spunk to her, that, that's for sure, you know, I don't, I, I don't mind her. But uh, she's definitely not like one of the more likable ones, uh, and you guys know my you, and you guys know my profile. It's freaking uh, Claire on top, um, Rebecca, or actually no, Jill second, and then Rebecca third. You know, just just out of seniority. Okay, all right. So I think I'm gonna call the episode here. I'm just gonna, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna go take a leak. And uh, in the next episode, uh, we will continue following Rebecca down this rabbit hole in my quest to prove my innocence. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, and I will catch you guys next time. Later.